In hospitals, nurses are always required to stay near the drip or IV bottles to check if it's about to get empty and needs to be replaced. In case of failure, it results into seeping of air bubbles while in other cases it causes reverse flow of blood which further causes a lot of pain. In some cases, it can even result into immediate death of the patient. We are providing a solution to the above set problems. We have created an IoT based automatic alerting and indicating device where sensor is used as a level sensor. When the fluid level is below the critical level, which will be well defined by the laser, it will alert the patient through the buzzer, nurses and doctors through the mobile app and the central control room using the web application. Hence, this prototype is a simple system which has a level sensor to provide an accurate level measurement system. The advantages of using our product are as follows. First, lesser work for the nurses and the doctors, which can help in a time where the staff is limited. Secondly, it will highly reduce the hazards that are caused due to the reverse flow of the blood, which causes a lot of pain and can even result into death. Thirdly, it's highly accurate as it uses a precise laser to monitor the drip level. And lastly, the price, costing around not more than 500 rupees, is highly economical to be used for every bed in the hospital. Starting with the database, we use Firebase as a database system to communicate between the prototype, the web server, and the mobile app. The roles of web server and mobile app are somewhat different. The web server will generally be located at the reception and the central control room, whereas the mobile app is for the nurses and the doctors. We thought limiting the web server for just the smart IV will not be as efficient. So we created a web server to maintain records of all the patients that are currently admitted in the hospital, the ones that are discharged and the ones that have drip attached to them. This helps the hospital to opt out from the traditional database management system that they are using. So moving on to its working on opening the web server, we are greeted with the login screen. These email ID and passwords should be provided by the hospital for every nurse and the doctor. For our prototype, if the user email does not exist, it creates the one with the ID and the password provided. Post login, we can see three options. That is, a new, add a new patient ID, show the drip status, and remove a patient. The add new patient ID is used to get details required when a person is admitted. These values are then pushed to a patient database on the Firebase with the unique patient ID of seven digits, which is displayed on the page as well. Now, for the smart IV part, this has to be done by the nurse or the doctor using the mobile app. On starting the app, we see the same login activity as the web server. On logging in, we see two options, add drip entry and check for assistance. On opening the drip entry, the app asks for the patient ID, which then pulls the required info from the patient database for the smart IV. The drip that is to be attached is selected and then confirmed. This creates a new entry in smart IV database, which is different from the patient database which is used by the prototype hardware and the check for assistance activity on the mobile app and show status on the web server. Our prototype requires 5 volt 150 mA that can either be provided by a power bank or a mobile charger, which makes it highly efficient. Though a simple capacitive dropper circuit, also known as a transformerless power supply, can be used to convert direct 220 volt AC supply to 5 volt DC for the final model. Our prototype includes a node MCU, a precise laser, a LDR, and a buzzer. Node MCU is a low cost open source IoT platform which is based on the ESP12 module. This is the heart of our prototype and connects the database to our hardware. The laser and the LDR together works as a level sensor for the drip bottle. As soon as a liquid goes below the level at which the level sensor is attached, it sends a signal to the buzzer and changes a Boolean value in the Firebase server. This prototype that I have is hard-coded with the bed number 1 at room number 101. So as soon as the database for the above room number and the bed number is created, it self-assigns to that database. Here I have two bottles, one has a liquid above the level and one with liquid below the level. Bottle containing liquid above the level indicates that the drip need not to be replaced. Hence it shows with a green color on the web server as well as on the app. But as soon as the other bottle containing liquid lower than the drip level is attached, it triggers the buzzer and shows with a red color in the app and the web server, indicating that the drip needs to be replaced for the patient. Now, if the patient no longer requires the drip, it can be removed using the app by the nurse or the doctor. 
Opening the assistance activity, we see all the patients that are currently attached to the drip. On clicking the one we need to remove, we can see the drip status. Since the drip can only be removed when it is empty, we created a condition to check for the same. That is, the entry can only be deleted when the drip is at critical level. Now we are left with the last option of the server which is the delete entry. This is used when the patient is discharged. We need to input the patient ID which shows all the details and ask for the final confirmation. If the patient that is to be discharged is still in the smart IV database, it will result in an error. Thus, prior to discharge, nurse or doctors are also required to remove the drip entry from the app. Now, if this is done, it will remove the patient from the patient database and add it into the archive database, which is used to store all the patients that have ever admitted to this hospital.